But good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining us today. My name is Tracy Nguyen. I'm the Youth Engagement Project Coordinator at the California School-Based Health Alliance. Welcome to the You and Me Together Vape Free Educator Training led by Stanford Reach Lab team. Um, this is the second webinar in our five-part series on smoking, vaping, and different intervention methods. And just a heads up, just because I know there's been some questions about this, like, do I have to come to the first webinar to be here at the second webinar? And the answer is no, you are free to come to whichever webinars or in-person training sessions um, that work best for you and your time. Although we do hope uh, to see you at all of our webinars and in-person training sessions, but they do not inform each other. So you can come to the first one and then skip over to the third one. You can come to the second one right now and then skip over to the fourth one. Totally okay, but again, we'd hope to see all of you there for all five parts, um, well, four parts now, considering we already finished the first one. But if you missed the first one and you want to know about it, it is recorded. It is on our website. And if you're interested in it, please just let me know. And I'm happy to send over the recording for that as well. Uh, but with that, I'd like for us to go ahead and uh, get started with just some thank you um, to our funder, the California Department of Education Tobacco Use Prevention uh, Education Program. Uh, for supporting this project and for making this webinar possible. I do want to mention that the contents do not necessarily reflect the position or policy of the CDE. I also wanted to give um, some housekeeping um, to some folks. So this webinar is being recorded um, and the recording and slides will be posted on the website and emailed to you as well as all other registrants um, for those who are not able to come today. And just a heads up, if you have any questions throughout this presentation, this webinar, please feel free um, to put it in the group chat. Um, our presenter will be able to get to them, to some of them throughout the presentation. Um, but for longer questions or more specific questions, um, please also put them in the group chat, but we'll just um, answer them towards the end of this webinar during our dedicated Q&A time. But again, feel free to put your questions, for example, if you need to clarify a little bit more clarification on a specific slide or to slow down a bit or to repeat something, feel free to put that in the group chat um, and our presenter will be happy to do so. And then I also wanted to uh, talk a little bit more about our organization, the California School-Based Health Alliance, in case folks have not heard about it before, but we are a statewide nonprofit organization dedicated to improving the health and academic success of children and youth by advancing health services in schools. Um, and so we basically advocate for more school-based health centers and we support and improve existing school-based health centers. And we do this primarily through policy work, capacity building, building um, and also technical assistance like the workshop and webinars that we are putting on today. So if you're interested in learning more about our organization, here's the website for you. Um, again, this is where you can find uh, recording slides and other additional resources. And with that, I'd like to go ahead and kind of uh, mention our conference uh, this year. So we're going to have our annual 2023 uh, conference. It's called Advocating for Student Healing and Health. It's going to be held in Sacramento. Um, actual conference day is going to be Monday, April 17th. And then along with that, what we're doing differently this year is we're going to have Advocacy Day. And Advocacy Day will be uh, the next day, which is Tuesday, April 18th. This will also be held in Sacramento. So if this is of interest to you, you and it's not already on your calendar or you have not registered, please go ahead and do so. You can find more information at this um, link right here. I'm also happy to put that in the chat in just a moment. But along with um, conference, I'd like to uh, mention if you become a member of our organization, you do get conference registration discount. This is especially great for those who are, those are part of a organization who have multiple folks interested in joining us for our conference day. This is a great perk. Also, um, we will be providing technical assistance uh, to your organizational needs as well. So again, if this is of interest, here's the link for you to join us. And then with that, I'd like to go ahead and introduce our presenter for today. Her name is Carly Noelani Kajiwara. Uh, she was born and raised in Moanalua, uh, Oahu. Sorry, I'm saying that wrong. 
Oh, I'm getting like the, the no, that I'm saying it correctly. Thank you, I appreciate it. Um, she graduated from Kamehameha School and went on to UC Berkeley where she majored in psychology and creative writing. She has experience in both a healthcare and legal setting and her interests are at the intersection of psychology uh, and the law, particularly working with uh, minority communities. Currently, she is the education coordinator at the Stanford Reach Lab uh, where she helps with uh, to develop curriculum assist with research and conducts uh, training. And then in her free time, Carly enjoys surfing, traveling, working on new crafts, writing short stories and going on adventures with her border colleague, Nala. And with that, I will go ahead and pass it on to Carly to talk more about the Stanford You and Me Together Bake Free curriculum. Go ahead and take it away, Carly. Awesome, thank you so much, Tracy. <laughs> You're so kind. Um, okay, I'm gonna go ahead and share my slides. Um, okay, everyone can see that looks okay. Awesome. All right. Uh, so as Tracy was saying, uh, this is the You and Me Together Vape Free Educator Training uh, with Stanford Medicine Reach Lab. And uh, before we begin, if you could all complete this survey, I'm going to um, pop it into the chat. Um, so you can go ahead and click on that tiny URL in the chat, or uh, if it's easier, you can take out your phone and scan the QR code, but if you could just complete that um, survey for me, that'd be awesome. It's just for us to keep track of who comes uh, to these trainings and if you find it helpful. Uh, so we'll take a, a few moments and then we'll begin with introductions. Okay, I see someone can't see it in chat. Um, let's see. Every... Oh, okay. I think you sent it to the host and panelists. So oh, let me go ahead and okay. send this to everyone. No worries. Thank you, folks, for letting us yeah. know. Thank you. I think I just sent it again. Hopefully that went through. Okay, <laughs> great. Thank you. Thank you so much. Awesome, awesome. Okay, perfect. Yes. Oh, the conference. Yes, I am working on that right now. Hang tight, folks.
Okay, uh, for time's sake, I'm just going to move on to introductions, but if you're still filling out the survey, please feel free to continue. Uh, it only takes a few minutes and I'll get started with just brief introductions. Okay, so first of all, I wanted to introduce uh, Dr. Bonnie Halpern Felsher. She is our PI professor, toolkit founder, and the Reach Lab director. Um, she's amazing. She's a developmental psychologist. And if you have any questions about the curriculum, how it was created, um, any like scientific stuff, she also writes wonderful papers and articles. Uh, you can email her at bonnieh at stanford.edu. And um, hi there. Uh, as Tracy stated earlier, um, I'm Carly Kajiwara. Uh, I'm the education coordinator within the REACH lab. So I work on curriculum. I do training stuff. Um, I also create content uh, for the lab. And if you have any questions uh, regarding anything at all, um, you can email me at Noelani, which is my middle name, at stanford.edu. Okay, so agenda. Uh, we, we're taking the first five minutes for arrival, doing that pre-survey. Um, ho hopefully um, it's finishing up now, um, the opening and then some brief intros. Then we're gonna spend about 10 minutes uh, doing an introduction of the curriculum background, uh, how it was created and, um, and all of that. And then 15 minutes going over a brief overview of the curriculum. So an overview of all six lessons that we offer uh, and then taking a deep dive into the website. And then for the last portion, we're gonna do an activity and then uh, the last 10 minutes, we're going to do a post survey, closing, and questions. And um, as Tracy mentioned, if at any time you have a question, uh, if I'm going too fast, if you want to you know, review a slide again, um, please feel free to put it in the chat. I'll be monitoring it. But if I miss anything, uh, Tracy, please let me know. Awesome. So uh, this is our Stanford Medicine Reach Lab. We're a fairly large lab, but th these are all the amazing, wonderful people who do research around um, tobacco prevention uh, and other substance uses like cannabis. Um, but this is the wonderful team that has brought you the You and Me Together Vape Free um, curriculum. Now, this is specifically the curriculum team. So this is the team responsible for uh, developing You and Me Together Vape Free. There's uh, Bonnie, myself, and then we have Marsha, who's our Director of Positive Youth Development. Uh, she does amazing work with our Youth Action Board, uh, which I'll introduce in just a moment. And then there's also Juanita Green, who is our Director of Curriculum Development. Now, this is our Stanford Reach Youth Action Board, or our YAB, YAB Board. Um, we have a cohort of students coming in every year. Uh, it's a one-year uh, sort of internship, and um, they're high school and early college students. And when we say our curriculum is made for youth, by youth, we really mean it. Um, the YAB consults with us on our curriculum, they review our materials, and they also create great content for us. So you'll see in some of the slides, some of the videos, infographics, um, examples are made, are made by the YAB. And they also let us know what's going on uh, in their communities. So what their peers are using, um, you know, the kind of social pressures they're facing, what's going on in their communities. Um, and they really help us out. So they're a wonderful, amazing group of youth. And I always like to give a shout out to our social medias. There's our Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook there as well. Um, so uh, if you want to follow us for anything regarding like launches, we have some new curriculums coming out. We have a uh, conference coming up. Uh, so if you're interested in getting updates about that, feel free to follow us on social media. And also if you see, you know, an interesting article that's being um, published or a new scientific study that's coming out, um, tag us in it as well. We love to see those. Awesome. And then always, as usual, we'd like to give a special thanks to our sponsors for allowing us to keep these trainings free and supporting our research and community goals. So these are all of our sponsors. Okay, I also wanted to mention our Cannabis Awareness and Prevention Conference coming up in April. It's April 26th and 27th from 8 a.m. to 1 p.m. Pacific time. Uh, it's also completely virtual. So no matter where you are, um, different time zone, anything like that, I believe everyone here is California. But um, yeah, so if no matter where you are, you are able to join. Um, our tiny URL is here, but I'll also show you where to find it on the website. So you can just click on it and then register right away. Um, yeah, virtual conference, April 25th, 26th and 27th. Um, I haven't attended myself, but it's um, I hear it's amazing and our team is putting a lot of work into it. So um, please join if you can. So the goals of our training today, this training is an interactive deep dive into our new You and Me Together Vape Free curriculum. Uh, it's becoming familiar with the material, collaborating with other educators, and if you have any questions, now's the time to go over it. Um, oh, I see Emily says it's an amazing conference. Thank, thank you, Emily. Awesome. 
Now, uh, the different ways to use the toolkit. So you can use the toolkit um, to deliver the curriculum to your class. So whether you have a class of 30 students or you can deliver to your entire school in like an assembly setting. You can use the integrated activities in your class. So if you don't use the specific lessons, you can still use the activities, uh, the worksheets uh, or anything like that that may be relevant to your students. You can present the slides at a community forum or for parents and students or at a town hall. Uh, you can also use the resources for one on one meetings uh, for programs intended for students to quit uh, vaping or cannabis use. You can also have your youth present or do a project on the curriculum. So if you, um, you can give them access to the slides and then they can present it themselves to their peers. And lastly, you can link our toolkit to your website's resource page if any students or parents are interested in getting more resources on uh, vaping or cannabis use. Now, a little bit more about the toolkit. Today, we are doing this training on the You and Me Together Vape Free curriculum, but uh, the curriculum is part of our larger Stanford Tobacco Prevention Toolkit. And the toolkit includes many things. Um, the You and Me, uh, it includes our CAPT, which is the Cannabis Awareness and Prevention Toolkit. Uh, it also includes Healthy Futures, which is our alternative to suspension program. So if students have already been caught vaping or using um, e-cigarette products, uh, instead of suspending them, because we all know they just go home and vape some more, um, this is designed to have them still come to school, have them do it in like a detention setting or at an administrator's office, and it's like a self paced um module based thing where they you know go through uh videos and then they can you know make reflections on um, their willingness to quit or they can make a plan to quit um but yes that's healthy features and that's also a part of the tobacco prevention toolkit um but the whole toolkit itself is interactive it's online and it's completely free so all of these things are, are completely free the toolkit includes activities, which we'll go over, um, some educator crash courses. So if you yourself don't know a lot about like brain function or um, like addiction science, and you want like a quick recap before you teach it to your students, we have some of those. We have discussion guides, which are like take home uh, homework assignments, or you can do them in class. We have fact sheets and cahoots, which is like the um, multiple choice questions where you put it on the on the board or on the screen and then students can log in on their phone or laptop and then they have to answer multiple choice questions uh, as quickly as possible and as accurately as possible and then it ranks them based on that. It's super fun and students usually love it for the uh, competitive aspect of it, but they also get to, um, you, you also get to test their knowledge. And we also have PowerPoints, uh, but nowadays we're moving a little bit away from PowerPoint into Canva slides, and you'll see why in just a moment. Canva really looks amazing, uh, and our slides are newly updated using Canva. Oh, I see a question. Um, oh, okay, I will um, return to that question in a little bit. Okay, so development and evidence of the toolkit. So the toolkit was launched in 2016 by Bonnie and some of our other collaborators in response to really this increase um, of e-cigarette use among students and youth today. It's rooted in scientific theory and supported by research. And we also really value our community partnerships and are always open to feedback on the toolkit. So that's all of you, if you use the toolkit on the website and you notice, oh, a link is down, or maybe there's a statistic that needs to be updated, or you're noticing, oh, in my community, we don't, there's not, um, the students don't use Juul anymore. It's more other products like Flume or Puff Bar, which we are noticing, and we've updated accordingly, but stuff like that. Um, please always uh, email us, let us know what's going on in your community and what you'd like to see. Usually if it's a broken link or some other kind of technical thing, we'll try to fix it as soon as possible within a few days. But if it's a wish list thing, like uh, you love this activity, you think it should be included, there's a topic, you know, that what you think should be covered in the curriculum, but is not covered currently, currently uh, we'll usually get uh, as much time as quickly as possible. Um, we can get that up for you. Um, the toolkit was also evidence-informed and fact-checked by professionals in the field. One thing that I think makes our curriculum stand out is our ability to revise or update it uh, quickly. All changes are made live on Canva uh, in real time. So as soon as the changes are made, it's up uh, on the website. And um, we uh, frequently do like revisions to our curriculum to include the latest products, the latest trends, um, the latest scientific theory and numbers um, that we have at our disposal. So um, ability to revise and update it quickly. And all these wonderful things equals our toolkit. Now, before we get into our curriculum, into the, the meat of it, um, I wanted to let you guys know about this great opportunity we have called Youth Views. It's a R01 study um, going on in the schools. 
So we frequently receive inquiries about the efficacy of our curriculum. So does it actually work? Does our curriculum actually reduce or discourage um, e-cigarette, vaping, cannabis product usage uh, among students and youth. And while we have initial results and early signs that yes, it does work, uh, we've been getting great feedback that it works, we're really looking for that gold standard. Um, and the gold standard is having a data-backed research validated curriculum. So we want to be able to say, here's our data, here's the percentages, this is the percent that it decreased, do students' attitudes changed you know, this much over time, and we can do that by a randomized control trial. And these randomized control trials are pretty rare in education. Uh, so it is for middle and high schools. Uh, if you know anybody or if you yourself are a middle or high school educator um, that is interested in participating, please let me know. Uh, we have incentives. So I believe it's $2,000 um, per school over a course of two years. Uh, and that can be used for programming in the classroom or anything like that. I believe the teachers or educators that are giving out the curriculum get $250. Uh, and then each student gets a $10 incentive gift card per survey. So for example, we take a survey at the beginning to test their attitudes, uh, the percentages of uh, vaping usage, and then you uh, teach the curriculum. We have a post survey to see if those attitudes and or anything have changed since then. And then we have like a follow-up survey a couple months later to see again, if attitudes have changed. Um, and each one of those um, surveys, yeah, the student gets a $10 gift card. Uh, yes, we actually don't have, um, I see someone asked about a link for you to use. We don't have a link, but if you are interested, um, I can get you set up with Holly, who is our wonderful research coordinator. You can email her at hlung at stanford.edu and just tell her, hey, I'm interested in the youth use studies. I want to learn more and she'll set up a meeting with you or she can do an initial uh, screening thing to see um, if you're interested or you can email me as well at um, Noelani at stanford.edu, and then I can get you connected to Holly. Um, I see a comment. Is the trial over today? Um, I believe it's still uh, it's still continuing. We are starting, um, but we are still recruiting currently. So if you'd like to if you'd like to um, participate, um, just email, reach out to Holly. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Uh, so as I mentioned before, most of our slides are on Canva, so we really um, encourage you to create an, uh, a Canva Pro account. Uh, I will pop a link into the chat right now about um, creating a Canva account if you don't already have one. But if you go to this link, um, you'll see how to sign up and, and all of that. And uh, we recommend a Canva Pro account just because you'll be able to see the slides and the talking points in the notes section. Uh, you can make a copy, like a personal copy of the slides, and you can make personal adjustments. So if you want to change the font, if you want to add a picture of your own class, uh, if you want to remove a slide or add in an activity, you can do that all within your own Canva account. You can share the slides with your students or with other uh, educators. You can share it with parents or anyone uh, who has a who does or does not have a Canva account. And you can also download the slides as a PDF, PowerPoint, or video. And you can create your Canva account with your email address, Facebook account, or Google. And I do want to mention there's two versions of Canva. There's the basic uh, version of Canva, which is completely free for everyone. You can be um, anyone and uh, get it, and that's good enough for our slides our slide purposes, but then there's Canva Pro account, which we highly recommend to educators and anyone involved in nonprofits because that's also completely free. So if you have an education email, like a .edu address or a nonprofit email, you can sign up and you should be automatically approved for a Pro account completely for free. And um, usually if that doesn't work, um, they'll send you an email or you can email them and say, hey, I am an educator or I do work for a nonprofit. Uh, here's my uh, email or here's my ID or something that shows that you do and then they should approve you for a pro account completely for free. Um, the basic will work just fine, but we recommend the pro um, since it's free and because the animations are a little bit better in pro, uh, you also have access to more resources like um, certain images and things like that in pro, but yeah, basic or pro um, works very well. Uh, if you have any issues creating a Canva account or if you have any questions regarding Canva, um, please feel free to send me an email. I'd be happy to set up a meeting with you to walk you through uh, how to create a Canva account. Now, with that being said, uh, let's jump into our You and Me Together Vapory curriculum. Here is our... our website. I just put it into the chat. You can also Google uh, Stanford Tobacco Prevention Toolkit, and it should be the very first website that pops up. But otherwise, it's right here in the chat. 
And um, in our You and Me Together Bait free curriculum, there are six lessons, and they're designed to be about 50 minutes each or one class period long. Uh, if you have a longer like block period, hour and a half, you can always do two lessons, or you can add in some additional activities, which I'll show you where to find. Um, if you have a shorter pe class period, maybe like 40, 45 minutes, you can always take a couple slides out, uh, take an activity out or something to really personalize it to your class. The six curriculum lessons include, the first one uh, is about the brain, full of potential, your brain, nicotine free. The second one is about healthy body, healthy youth, the effects of e-cigarettes on the rest of the body. So we talk about the lungs, uh, the heart, and even the digestive, digestive system, I believe. Uh, the third lesson is about the impact of cigarettes and or e-cigarettes on the environment. The fourth, the fourth one is all about marketing and how marketing specifically targets youth to buy their e-cigarette and vaping products. The fifth lesson is a novel lesson, uh, a new one about uh, being your strength, stress coping, and wellness. And the sixth one is titled Can't Be Missed, Cannabis and Youth, which is our co-use cannabis and nicotine lesson. Uh, so those are the initial six. We recommend doing them in this order. You can either do it um, one a day for a week or six days, um, or you can do it like on Monday, one Monday every, every week um, that you do them. But this is the order that we recommend doing them in. Now, uh, I know that was really fast, but I'll give uh, a little bit of overview of each lesson and I'll do one or two example slides per lesson. And then we'll have a chance to kind of dive into the website and you can see each lesson for yourself. Uh, the first lesson is full of potential, your brain nicotine free. And we've been finding that students or youth in general love to learn about their brain. They love to learn about the neurons and synapses and how their brain works and how it's developing. And we really stress everyone's brain is unique. Everyone's brain is different as you're learning and growing. And as an adolescent or teen, you're supposed to be figuring out what you enjoy, figuring out your talents, your personality, and your values. And you're not supposed to be getting addicted to things like nicotine or other um, e-cigarette products. We also go over the adolescent brain and how it develops from the back to the front and how the prefrontal cortex is the last thing to develop. And it's still developing until you're about 25 or so, mid-20s. And that's why it's super important not to get addicted to drugs um, earlier in your brain development. I also did want to note that we have a uh, middle school and a high school version of each each lesson, uh, and it is grade level appropriate. So the middle school version is a little bit more animated. It's not super deep into the science. And then the high school is a little bit more neuron focused. There's chemicals and synapse stuff in there um, based on grade level. So um, you are able to choose whichever grade level is most appropriate for your class. We also do have an elementary school version coming out um, since sadly we've been hearing uh, about usage as young as third grade and how this uh, the curriculum is kind of needed in elementary school. So that's coming out shortly. We're hoping maybe within the next two weeks or so, I will have a launch. So if you're interested in that, follow us, and then um, you'll be notified about when we do launch that elementary school version. But right now, the middle school and high school is ready, open, and available on our website. Some key takeaways uh, from this lesson are that the teen's brain's job is to figure out what makes you, you. Like we were saying, everyone's brain is unique. The brain is awesome and full of potential, especially as a teen. Um, an adolescent's brain is particularly vulnerable to drugs, which is that development piece. And then nicotine hooks you and makes your brain think you need it, which is why it's very important not to get addicted um, in adolescence or early development. Okay, so that was lesson one about the brain. Lesson two is um, healthy body, healthy youth, and it's about the effects of e-cigarettes on the rest of the body. As I was saying, we talk about the heart, the digestive system, and you know, importantly, we also talk about the lungs. So this is titled No Fun in the Lungs. Uh, we talk about inflammation and irritation of the airways, destruction of air sacs in the lungs, and um, we also talk about how there's a weaker immune response to infection for somebody who is using vaping or e-cigarette products. Um, we also updated to include things like COVID-19. We say if you are smoking, it's harder to fight off the infection of COVID-19. Um, which everyone knows about um, knows about now, but I also wanted to mention um, this is what Canva looks like. This is you know these are all example slides, and Canva looks really amazing. All of our images are on here. Um, the animations are great. Like you can see this like little the little lines here that show you like where each of these things are. Um, we're hoping it's super youth engaging. They don't get bored looking at the slides, and it keeps their attention. Um, okay, the key takeaways for lesson two. 
is that e-cigarettes are not just harmless flavored water vapor like some students do think. They do produce that aerosol, which is full of harmful chemicals and other particles and uh, constituents in it. The e-cigarette aerosol does damage the lungs and which can lead to disease or uh, it can also affect the heart. And we also talk a bit about the chemicals and the flavors and flavorants of uh, e-cigarettes since we all know students love the, uh, the fruit flavors or the candy flavors and that's what really attracts them. And we also mentioned that, you know, that's also chemicals and that's also bad for you. And we also want to stress that going smoke or vape free allows the body to heal right away. So uh, we never want to make students feel if they are using like, oh, it's too late for me. I'm already smoking and vaping. Oh, oh well, you know, we also want to give them that empowerment piece that it's never too late. And they have the decisions to make healthy, dis or, sorry, they have the ability to make um, healthy decisions for their own body, for their own community. So giving that them that empowerment piece. Okay, I saw some uh, comments. What grades, levels for elementary, upper elementary, or all grades? Um, the elementary school version is geared towards um, third grade, so you can use it um, maybe a little bit lower uh, and definitely a little bit higher as well. Uh, for sixth grade, fifth grade, you can still use the middle school version. Um, or you can kind of combine slides. So if you want to use the middle school version, but then take out some really specific, a uh, little bit higher level science stuff, you can use that for upper elementary, um, but the elementary school version is geared towards about third grade. So yeah, thank you for your question. And that's not available yet. It's coming out in the next two weeks. So follow us um, for that launch. Okay, so the third lesson is what a waste, impact of cigarettes and e-cigarettes on the environment. And we've been finding that youth really care about the environment. Sometimes they're like, ah, I don't care about myself. I don't care about my body and what I put into my body. But this one's resonating with a lot of students because they care about other people. They care about the environment, conservation. They care about their community. Uh, so this one is kind of all encompassing uh, in that. We go over the impact that it has, um, and I think there's a really fun trivia question where we ask what's the number one littered plastic item in the U.S. or in the world, um, and it's actually cigarette butts because the microfibers or the microplastics in the filter of the cigarettes um, are plastics, and it doesn't biodegrade, so that's the number one littered plastic item. Uh, and then here we have a jewel pod, I believe, and we talk about the different components of e-cigarettes, such as this, the lithium ion battery. We all know we can't take them on airplanes or put them in the check luggage because they're dangerous. They can explode. So if they just finish and then toss it away in the park, um, it's obviously not a good thing. Same thing with the mouthpiece, I believe, right here. If, it, if it's in the park or something or in the trash and kids get their hands on it, that's you know never a good thing. And then the other parts of it here, uh, plastic parts, the pod, the juice, the, some toxic chemicals in there can always get into our waterways, into our soil. We all know plastic takes forever to decompose. And if it does, they turn into microplastics, which end up sometimes in our food. So, um, you know, just taking a step back and realizing how e-cigarette usage impacts the environment and our community. The key takeaways for lesson three are that cigarettes and e-cigarettes are not biodegradable and they do harm the environment. And quitting the use of cigarettes or e-cigarettes or never starting in the first place, which is key, um, reduces harm to the environment. Properly disposing of cigarettes or e-cigarettes helps to protect the environment. And I think there's a great activity in here about um, finding their local um, e-waste disposal site, because I believe it does um, vary county by county, city by city. So wherever you are, there's an activity uh, where students can find, oh, you know, I can go to this store or to this government site and dispose of uh, e-waste. Uh, and, and some schools have actually created like a, a drop-off box in the office or something. And then there's like a teacher that takes it to the um, e-waste site, you know, on a certain day. But and that's one activity they can do. And always as well, ending in that empowerment piece, you or the student can help protect our environment in many ways. Great, so that's lesson three. Lesson four is don't be played how tobacco marketing targets youth. Uh, don't be played or don't be fooled. Um, and this is my favorite lesson. Uh, I think it's fun in like the worst kind of way. Uh, and it's about uh, how tobacco marketing really wants to get them young. So uh, they have like a lifelong customer because they know tobacco and nicotine um, is addictive. Uh, we have various Sorry, we have various ads. Uh, this one is, you know, um, targeting market, sorry, product placement. Uh, we go over different marketing tactics to show the students, you know, how they're being marketed to. For example, this one is really colorful. It has the jelly beans and uh, this like really ombre colorful uh, vape pen here. 
Uh, this one here on the top left is definitely geared towards kids. I mean, first of all, it's on Instagram. A lot of young people and students use Instagram. Um, there's like these paints here. Uh, there's a obviously a youth drawing on their shoes with um, a paintbrush. And then there's a highlighter, some, some pens, some paints, and then a big pen right here. So it's definitely saying, hey, youth or young people who like art use this. The one on the bottom left here um, of cars is also an Instagram ad. And it's saying like, you know, if you're cool, if you like cars, you'll also vape. Uh, this one here is uh, like a rocket ship with the stars on it. And that's obviously youth facing as well. And this flume advertisement is hello, says hello summer. Students have summer break and when they're on summer break, they go to the pool and it's just kind of implying like, oh, if you're on summer break and you go to the pool, this is something fun that you do. So these are just some examples of product placement within um, vaping and cannabis, or sorry, vaping and e-cigarette e ads uh, that we show the students. And I did want to note as well, each of these slides or every lesson has talking points accompanying the the slides. And while we um, do recommend that you change it yourself, you make it um, as much specific to your class as possible. Um, there are specific instances where we recommend using the talking points exactly as they are. And this is one of them, um, because we don't want to be showing students these really fun ads. And we don't want them walking away with the idea that, wow, you know, that's a cool ad. Um, and the talking points are specifically crafted to tell them this is targeting you. This is not cool. It's not fun. Um, it's specifically marketing targeting you. So um, this would be one of the instances where we recommend using the talking points as they are, but otherwise totally open for you to personalize and customize. Now, uh, this is the key takeaways for lesson four. And as you can see, this is a video, um, it's integrated in there. Nicotine e-cigarette companies are using the same sneaky marketing tactics as the big tobacco industry to lure in those new customers or young customers. Uh, nicotine and e cig companies use eye-catching advertisements and marketing tricks to appeal to a young audience. So these fruit flavors here. And the nicotine industry uses sneaky ads and flavored nicotine e-cigarettes to hide the health harms of their products. So this is like the save up to 30% off on paws and disposables with the slippers there and then the sand, as well as the rock tier anything. So it's appealing to youth who maybe might be learning the guitar or something. Um, the the body of this vape pen here, I don't know if you can see it, but it's it looks like a guitar neck and that's appealing to you. So um, kind of just going over those tactics and recognizing, giving the students skills to recognize the marketing tactics here. Um, and yeah, I want to mention that this is like um, a video. I, um, I didn't share my sound, but there's like some music going on when you're playing the video and everything is integrated right into Canva. So as soon as you click the next slide, the video plays, um, all videos, activities are all integrated into the Canva slides. Now uh, for lesson five, so be your strength, stress, coping, and wellness. This is our novel lesson. It's one of the newer ones. If you have used our uh, toolkit before, this wasn't in it, uh, but we've been really finding out that students, you know, when we ask them, why, why, did you, why are you using uh, e-cigarette products or why are you vaping? And they're saying, because I'm stressed out because they lost, you know, two years, maybe more of socialization with their peers. And they're really wanting to connect with their peers. And this is one way to do it um, because they're growing up and learning things and growing. And it's stressful doing that. Um, and they're using it to cope. And so we go over a little bit about um, stress, both positive and negative stress and how to cope with that. We go over our mental health and self-medication. So about how we may respond um, to stress by choosing different activities to help us. And it's never a good thing to use. Oh, excuse me. It's never a good thing to use um, drugs like uh, nicotine or e-cigarettes to help cope with that. And then we talk about what self-medication is and what that means uh, when someone uses substances repeatedly and consistently to deal with stress, anxiety, or other mental health issues. So we talk a little bit about that. And the key takeaways for um, lesson five is that stress is a part of everyone's life. There are healthy ways to cope with stress, such as taking a walk, uh, watching a movie, talking with your friends, um, reading, uh, playing soccer, playing a sport or anything like that. Uh, there are tons of healthy ways that don't include using e-cigarettes and or cannabis vapes. And then we go over some great activities. We go over a breathing and meditation activity uh, to kind of help with that. And then lastly, we talk about stigma of substance abuse and how that may worsen mental health and underlying stressors. So just really stressing compassion 
and saying, you know, if you do know somebody, if you have a peer that you know vapes or use e-cigarettes, we never want to make them feel dumb or lesser than, um, and we never want to put that stigma on them uh, just because they are using e-cigarette products. And I was keeping that door open to say, you know, do they need help? Is there a way to support them? Um, because we never know what may be underneath those stressors. Okay, that's lesson five. Uh, lesson six is our co-use lesson, Can't Be Missed, Cannabis and Youth. Uh, and this one's uh, important because a lot of students uh, who do use cannabis, um, something that's really popular now, I think it's called Backwoods, and that's the cannabis flower that's rolled in paper containing nicotine. And uh, we're finding that students are smoking these and getting addicted to nicotine and not even knowing it because they don't know what's in the paper. Um, so we talk about the effects of cannabis short and long term, but then we also talk about co-use and how that, you know, all fits together. This is a great slide about, you know, if the students are using cannabis, uh, it's kind of giving them the empowerment piece, showing them that they have a decision to make about if they're using cannabis, uh, they should consider stopping until the brain is sufficiently developing or considering reducing how much they use if they're not using cannabis. Um, then they could should consider waiting until the brain is finished developing to decide or consider not starting in the first place. Now, the um, key takeaways for uh, lesson six is that cannabis can be consumed by eating or inhalation. So we talk about uh, edibles as well as uh, smoking to uh, smoking consumption, um, cannabis can cause short or long-term effects. We also talk about how young and developing brains are particularly susceptible to damage due to cannabis use. Uh, we talk about um, some refusal of marketing and peer-to-peer -peer influences. Uh, each curriculum does have some great refusal tactics in there, but this one just has a, a good activity. And then as well, ending with that empowerment piece, you are in charge or you or the student is in charge of making healthy decisions for their own body, for their own community, um, and for their own selves. Okay, so I know that was a lot. Uh, we went over six 50-minute lessons uh, very, very quickly, but now we'll go into a live walkthrough where you'll be able to dive into the website yourself, kind of look at the slides, look at the lessons, um, and kind of get a good feel for it. So I'm gonna put it into the chat one more time, and I, I know I saw some questions coming in. Let's see, so uh, what is nicotine and does it trigger dopamine? Yes, and um, if you do want more information on that, there are some great addiction uh, crash courses on our website, which I'm gonna send right now. Uh, so you can look in that and I'd be happy to answer questions, uh, larger questions later on uh, after the presentation. Um, some people are saying, some of the corner stores sell smoke pipes. Yep, definitely. There's all kinds of products out there uh, and we try to get as many as possible, but um, this curriculum is specifically for vaping or e-cigarette usage. Um, oh yeah, and then somebody put in here about nicotine and uh, how it affects the brain. So yeah, thank you. Awesome conversation in the chat. Uh, okay. Let me switch my screens. I'm gonna hop over to our website, but I also just put in the chat. So if you wanna click on that link, you can do that. Or um, like I was saying earlier, you can always um, Google Stanford Tobacco Prevention Toolkit and that should be the first thing that pops up. Okay, if you click on that link or just navigate to our Tobacco Prevention Toolkit website, this is what should show up. Uh, you can see our logo here. If you scroll down, here is where you can find that fourth annual uh, Teaching Cannabis Awareness and Prevention Conference in April. If you click on this button here, you can it takes you right to the tiny URL to register for the conference. Now here, if you scroll a little bit more down, is the bulk of our curriculum or the bulk of our the meat of everything. Um, here's what we're focusing on today, the You and Me Together Vape Free curriculum. But if you scroll a little bit more down, these are all of the rest of the curriculums within the Stanford Tobacco Prevention Toolkit. Uh, we have our Healthy Futures curriculum, which I was mentioning earlier. It's the alternative to suspension program. We have two parts to it. It's the self-paced one, the one that I was saying that they come in to detention instead of being suspended, and then they go through their own module, um, learning about very similar things to the curriculum. Um, but, you know, it's, it's uh, self-paced on their own, and then they can answer reflections. And then there's also um, a second version of Healthy Futures where it's a small group discussion where there's one, usually counselor, or maybe administrator, going through um, a booklet with a couple of students at once. 
Uh, so what we're doing today, you and me together, vape free curriculum is more prevention uh, be, to be taught in classrooms. And then um, healthy features is intervention for students that have already been caught using uh, vaping products. Let me see in the chat. Uh, is there an update on Stanford and the safety first curriculum? Um, that's a great question. Uh, I'll I'll bring it up uh, afterwards, but um, we are working on updating the safety first curriculum. I think it's going to be launched um, next month in March, but yeah, look out for updates on that and potential launches. Uh, we also have our smokeless 101 tobacco curriculum or our smokeless tobacco 101 curriculum, which is um, kind of ta targeting those little packets of tobacco that students may use and they put it in their gums and then it, it leaches the nicotine or tobacco through um, through the saliva into the gum. So that's about that. And then hookah 101 as well. But uh, for today, we are focusing on you and me together vape free. So if you click on that and learn more, uh, we have our logo here, some testimonies, uh, a brief introduction, and then we have all of our lessons. And this is where you can find the slides uh, and everything uh, going with each lesson. If you scroll a little bit down, we have an introduction to the curriculum and general information about the curriculum. We have a little tab here about using Canva. So all of our slides are on Canva. And if you're having trouble creating an account or want a little bit more instruction about what Canva is, how it works, this tab is a good resource to go to. We have our warm-up activity. So if you want to do any activity with your class or with your students before jumping to the curriculum at all, these are some activities that we recommend doing. There's also a parent letter. So if you want to send home a letter to your student's parents saying, hey, we're going to be going over the Stanford Tobacco Prevention Toolkit in class. This is what it's going to be talking about. Um, if you have any questions, you can reach out to you know, myself or to them, et cetera. So um, there's a downloadable parent letter here. You can change it, put in your own name. You can print it on your school's letterhead and send it out to your parents. So that's another resource here. Here is where I was mentioning that crash courses for instructors. So if you click on this, it'll take you to uh, another page, but it'll pop up uh, different like addiction processes and um, brain functions and all of that. So I saw a question in the chat earlier. This is a great resource to go to if you have questions regarding those kinds of things and you can read about it. We also have different cultures and languages. Uh, right now we have a Hawaii version dedicated to Pacific Islander students um, specifically, but we are also coming out with um, a Spanish translation, a Chinese translation, I believe a Vietnamese translation of all of our content. And um, we do have an Arabic one, I believe as well. Um, but we are you know, double checking all of those, making sure everything is correct and everything integrates well. So those will be on the website soon, but this is where you can find different cultures languages. And then we have a short um, FAQ section here as well. Uh, so that's basically the homepage for our curriculum. Now we're going to take a deeper look into one of the lessons. So does anybody have a lesson that really stood out to them? Just as an example for us to go over, um, we'll go over, we'll, we'll take a deeper dive into each of them, but to show you kind of how the website is structured. Is there any one that stood out to anybody? Lesson, aha, lesson four. Okay, awesome, thank you. Uh, so just for an example, lesson four, if you wanna go to it, you can click on that right here and it'll take you to the homepage for lesson four, don't be played, how tobacco marketing targets youth. And then you can see up here, uh, you can navigate back to the introduction page or any of the other lessons as well. But we have a brief introduction and then we have learning objectives and key takeaways. So each lesson has these, and it's just what the students should be coming out of the lesson with, um, learning objectives, key takeaways. We have the common core education standards for each lesson as well. I believe there are both California and national uh, health standards on this document. And if you scroll down a little bit more, you'll see there's a middle school and a high school version. Uh, so you, um, depending on what grade level you teach or what you think is um, most applicable to your students, uh, you can click on middle or high school. And as you can see, they're a little bit different. The content is the same, but it's just geared towards a different audience. So this one, there's images of real teens on it. It's a little bit more teenage, teenagery focused. Um, we have the composition book. We, we have, I will learn, key takeaway slides, um, activities. So as you can see a bit, um, a bit for teens. And then if you click on the middle school version up here, uh, it's a little bit more animated, a little bit more cartoonish. Um, but the basic 
content is the same. Let me just skip through these. Yeah, so the activity may be a little different depending on the grade level. Um, like one was like a think pair share activity. This one is can you keep a straight face activity and the instructions are in the talking points. Um, I see a question. How different are the middle and high school lessons? Well, if you have repetitive, if they have had it in high school, middle school, um, that's a good question. They, they do have the same content, so it may be a little repetitive um, if they're doing it in middle school and then, you know, as the like next year or the year after they went to high school, um, the content is the same, but I think it's still applicable because in high school, it's a little bit like more in depth on the science part. Um, they have a little bit different uh, ads, for example, in this one, um, this one may have a little bit more, you know, candy ads, whereas the other one has more peer, uh, peer pressure, like social ads. Um, so yeah, yeah, I, I guess just use your, your best, um, judgment for your class if you think they got the, the message already they might find it boring um you can always take out activities or switch them out but they should be um they should be able to like i guess relate to both as they grow uh I, someone said that's okay they rem remember it more yeah hopefully um the, the activities are a little bit different um, but the content is the same thank you for your question uh if you scroll down a little bit from the preview of the slides uh, there's our talking points here. Um, so if you click on that, it's a chart of our talking points. Each lesson for both middle and high school has this. Uh, it's like the slide number, the image, and then the talking points. So if you want to print this out, this is a great resource to have if you want to have the slides up and then your talking points right in front of you printed out. Here, um, it's the whole table. Going back to the website now, uh, here's that discussion guide. If you click on that, um, each one is a little bit different. For example, this one is asking the student to do with a parent, trusted adult mentor, or a peer friend. So this one's designed to be a little bit more homework-like, uh, but you can still do it in class uh, if you have um, like a block period or extra time. It's asking them to watch a video and then answer these discussion questions with their parents. And it's kind of geared towards, um, you know, following up with the information that they learned, but also to open that door for them to talk with parents uh, or an adult mentor or a friend as well. Um, I see someone says they can talk and interact more, maybe do peer teaching if they know it. Yeah, exactly. So one of the ways that we recommend using uh, our whole curriculum, our whole toolkit is by giving the students access to the slides and maybe they can do a peer-to-peer -peer, um, kind of thing. We've had high school students use the middle school version to teach middle school students in like a, a buddy kind of program. So yeah, interaction, we um, highly encourage peer teaching as well. Uh, so that was the talking points, discussion guides, and then here is the Kahoot, which is that multiple choice game. If you just click on it, it'll take you directly to the Kahoot link. Um, and if you scroll down a little bit more, we have our offline PDF version. So if your students tend to get a little bit rowdy or you don't want them taking out their phones or computers to do like an online game, we do have the PDF version here that you can just print out and then they can fill out multiple choice style. It's like A, B, C, D style and you can grade their um, memory or comprehension uh, that way. We also have a PowerPoint download here. And each lesson comes with optional activities. So as I was saying before, if you do have a class period over 50 minutes or so, um, you can add in um, these optional activities to fill out time. They're also fun to do. So if you want to break it up into uh, multiple days, you can do like the teaching on one day and then activities on another day, um, however works best for your class. Um, so I, I will show you how to get the slides now. So if you go back up here to middle school versus high school, uh, click on whatever grade level you um, you need, and then you'll see view middle school lesson four on Canva. So you click on this green bar here, and what it'll do is it'll open it into presenter view in a new tab. And as you can see, you can, of course, um, scroll through, you can look at it in a grid view. But what I recommend doing is going to this um, Canva logo in the bottom right hand corner. Uh, not sure if you can see it on my screen, but um, my, my mouse is here. And you click on that Canva logo and it'll open up your Canva account um, on its own. So this is after you have opened your Canva account, after you're logged in, you go into our website, get the slides, and then you'll see right under recent designs here, um, it'll be lesson four, don't be played, um, how tobacco marketing targets youth. And what we recommend doing from here is going into these, um, three dots in the upper right hand corner. It's kind of purple now. You click on that and then you click on make a copy. And as you see, it'll make a copy 
right next to it. And this is your personal copy. So now you open it up and you can do anything you like with it. Um, the original ones that are on our website are locked just because we don't want any edits being made to them. But if you make a copy, you can move this around. Uh, if you want a different picture, you can put a different picture. Um, we do ask that you keep the logos on all of our slides. Um, but other than that, you can change like the fonts, you can change the activities, you can remove something. Um, like there's a video here. If you wanna make it bigger, you can make it bigger, um, change the colors. You can also swap out um, some ads, which is good um, for lesson four. Let me see. So this is talking about the tactics and stuff. Um, this example is color scheme. So if you know of any ads that your students are seeing in your own community, if there's a giant billboard in your community and you want to, uh, you know, put that in here uh, under like color scheme or something, um, you can always switch these out as well. Um, but as I mentioned before, they all come with talking points and they're down here kind of in the bottom left. Um, it says presenter notes. If you click on that, here are the talking points. So in these instances, we recommend keeping this, but in others, like maybe, you know, on this video or something, you can always change the talking points uh, here as well. Here is a activity like vocabulary race, list as many adjectives connected to this image as you can. Um, some more activities and um, instructions. So all of the activity instructions are also in here. And then we have like key takeaways, refusal skills and all of that. So Canva is really wonderful. I think they look really great. Uh, and if you wanna share, I wanna show you this um, in the upper right-hand corner, there's the share button. If you click on that, uh, you can share this design with other educators if you want. If you have like a cove um, health teacher or something that you want to share this with, they can also have access to the slide. Um, you can change it to only you can access or anyone with the link can access. So if you want to give it to your students to do a project, you can change their editing access features if you don't want them to change too much um, from your own personal slides. You can copy the link, present, um, you can download. So if you click on here, it's um, PDF, JPEGs, um, videos, or even a GIF. And then actually, I learned this kind of recently, but it's really important um, if you want to include notes. So if you do download it as a PDF, you can click this arrow here, uh, include notes, and um, it should also include the talking points as well when you download the PDF. All pages, etc. Now going back, clicking that share button, if you go down to more, there's a ton of options. Canva has a lot. Um, you can share, view only link, copy, send to a phone or something. Um, so put it on social media. But what I wanted to show you, if you scroll down, you can uh, download. That'll also take you to that PDF or image version. Here's also where you can download it as a Microsoft PowerPoint, Google Drive, Dropbox, Box, um, et cetera. Um, word of caution though, we don't recommend putting it directly to Google Drive because for some reason, Canva and Google Drive don't seamlessly connect. Uh, if you do need to put on Google Drive, we recommend uh, downloading it as a PowerPoint and then uploading it. But the only thing there is that not all of the animations may transfer and maybe not all of the videos will transfer. Um, most of them should, like most of the images should. But for example, like maybe this uh, animation here where the sun is moving, that doesn't always seamlessly transfer from Canva to PowerPoint. So we do highly recommend staying within Canva, presenting in Canva, um, making any changes in Canva since it's all right here and integrated already. But uh, we do understand some people prefer uh, PowerPoint or Google Drive. So that's available here. Uh, for presenting, I like to click on this button here, and then you can present full screen, uh, present and record, autoplay. I think you can um, like set a timer for how long you want each slide to go, and then it can autoplay. Um, and then presenter view is what I recommend. So when you click on presenter view, two windows will pop up. The first one will be a window for you where it has uh, the current slide, the next slide that's coming up, and then your talking points in front of you. And there's some other features like... Um, like a little timer that tells you oh, how long you've been presenting for, um, and et cetera. And then the second window that opens up is just the audience window. So that's the only thing that your students or the people who you're presenting to can see. And that's just the slide that you're on. So I recommend presenter you, but all these options um, are available to you. So yeah, that is uh, how to get the, the slides on Canva. Okay, I know I saw a bunch of comments coming through. Let me see if I um, can discuss them. Um, it can be taught in assembly. 
Uh, yes, I, I believe some people have, uh, and they said it went pretty pretty well, but they do have to make certain adjustments since a lot of them are pretty interactive, right? We have activities. Some of them are like breaking up into groups, think, pair, share, talk to your neighbor type activities. So you can always, um, you can always, I guess, uh, adjust uh, to your audience. Um, let's see without their slides. Uh -huh. Thank you. I, I'm, I'm glad to see so many great comments on here. Uh, are there any lessons that really focus on health disparities um, for LGBTQIA+. Um, we actually, let's see, uh, we touch on a little bit of those specific communities in each of the lessons, as you'll see if you, um, if you go through them, but for specific party populations like the LGBTQ, um, people of color, Latinx communities, uh, we have one specifically um, in the cannabis lesson. Uh, it's, it's called a supplemental lesson, and it's attached to lesson four, and it's actually about how um, they uh, the cannabis industry targets uh, women, people of color, and the LGBTQ community in specific ads, and we kind of unpack that a little bit more. It is not in the main part of the cannabis awareness and prevention toolkit, so it's a supplemental lesson, um, but that's um, amazing to bring up because it's definitely super important, and um, that will be launching very soon. Uh, I see a question about Canva. We can go back to that in a little bit. Um, awesome. Thank you. Okay. I see a lot of great comments. Um, just for time's sake, I will uh, head back to the, uh, the website. But if you do have any other questions, you can save them for after. I'll stay on for a little bit. Uh, okay. Are there any Canva specific questions like how to get to Canva, how to make that copy, um, any issues getting from the website to there? Uh, if you are having trouble making an account, feel free to email me and then we can set up a one-on-one -on -one meeting so I can go over step-by-step -step how to make that account for you. Um, okay. If there are no questions, uh, I'll head back to the website, but if you do, um, let me know. Uh, so I click back to the website here. We had just clicked on that view middle school lesson four on Canva, um, made our own copy and all of that. We have our high school. Uh, so you'll see they're a little bit different. And if you scroll down a little bit more, there's the things we went over, optional activities. And then if you want, you can click view lesson five. And then this is lesson five. Same exact setup, learning objectives, key takeaways. There's the common core standards. Uh, middle versus high school, and then all of like the talking points, discussion guides, um, and everything is right here. Same setup. Awesome. Awesome. Oh, I'm glad. Um, Anna says uh, there's a free educator account, Canva account. Um, they're paying for it. Okay. Yeah. If you're an educator or a nonprofit, you get Canva Pro for free, so you don't have to pay for it. So if you are paying for it, switch to <laughs> switch your subscription. That's very important. Yeah, I get it for free. Okay, um, if there are no questions on Canva or the website, can you quickly show how to get to Canva from the website? Yes, certainly. So from the website, say you're a middle school teacher, uh, you click on this green bar here, view middle school lesson five on Canva, and this will take you to the lesson five slides. You click on that. And then what you'll do is you go into the bottom right and click on that Canva logo on the bottom right. And this is after you've made your Canva account, after you're signed in, it'll take you right to your own personal account. This is mine. Uh, so please excuse the other stuff. Um, and then right here is where it'll pop up, but it should say view only um, because we have it locked so that it doesn't, uh, it can't be edited. And what you'll do is you'll go to these three dots and then click make a copy. And then that'll open up your own personal copy where you can make changes or anything like that. Um, so yes, that's how you get the slides from the website into Canva, if that makes sense. Um, let's see, can you go over the suggested alignment pieces to standards? Um, would you mind uh, clarifying your question, alignment pieces? Uh, are you talking about the Common Core Education Standards? Uh, if, that, if so, that's here, and you can just click on it, um, and then it'll show you, let's see, health education for middle school, California, um, for high school, California, and then we have like the national as well here. Um, oh, okay, great. <laughs> glad, to, glad to know. But um, yeah, I, I didn't go over it. It was just um, the link is right here and then you click on it and then it takes you to that document where it's all listed. Um, okay, great. I see. Um, oh, perfect. Thank you. Thank you for um, putting in my email. 
Okay, now, um, if there are any other questions on the website, on Canva, and if not, we'll switch back to the presentation. Okay, and uh, if anything comes up later, uh, if you're going through, uh, we're going to do like a more interactive thing now, uh, if you're going through the slides or anything and I have any questions as they come up, um, feel free to let me know, but I will switch my screens again. Okay, here we are. So we just did that live walkthrough of our website, and now we're going to do a scavenger hunt. <laughs> so. Um, as you saw in the website, we have different lessons. Um, there are six of them, but I only put five on the scavenger hunt here just for time's sake. Uh, so I will uh, send the website again. Oh, perfect. I see. Okay. Oh, one moment. Let me grab the link here. Okay. So I just put the link in the chat again. Uh, and then you can click on it, or if you just Google Stanford Tobacco Prevention Toolkit, it should show up. And now for the scavenger hunt, um, if you can click on the website and navigate to lesson one, let me know when you find the thumbs up and thumbs down activity. You can uh, type it in the chat or just say found it or um, anything like that to let me know that you were able to find lesson one and the thumbs up thumbs down activity in lesson one. I will also navigate to it myself. Okay, awesome. I see one thumbs up. I also just got there. Great. Great, great. So I will switch my screens again. Okay, I see most people were able, or some people were able to find it. I've been seeing a few thumbs up, thumbs down. Um in there. Uh, so yep, navigate to the website. I'm in the lesson one curriculum. And then here is the thumbs up, thumbs down um, activity. And then um, this is just basically asking the students, give a thumbs up or thumbs down. Do you like broccoli? Do you like art, sports, math? And um, it's just kind of uh, emphasizing the idea that everyone is different and we're still learning and growing and deciding what we like, what we don't like, what our brain is good at, what we're not good at. And you know, deciding, figuring that out is all okay. But um, now is not the time to introduce nicotine or e-cigarettes to your brain. Okay, great. So that's lesson one. I will share again. Now lesson two, find the what's in that aerosol slide and type one um, chemical that you find on that slide. Maybe something that you have never seen before or you've never heard about before. So that's in lesson two. You can just navigate from lesson one right into lesson two. And then if you scroll through the slides um, on either middle or high school, both should have them. Um, this, uh, what's in that aerosol slide. It's a little bit more in, just for a hint. Great, okay, I see them coming in. Yeah, it's what is that aerosol slide? Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Yeah, there's, I mean, somebody put copper, um, hexanol. Uh, yeah, you can just write any chemical that you see on this slide um, that you haven't heard before. That's maybe hard to pronounce, but that's the whole point that um, all of these chemicals are in e-cigarette aerosols, but and students are still putting it in their bodies. Can't find it, pyrene, zinc. Okay, it is in, uh, for those who can't find it, it's in lesson two. Um, let me double check what slide number it is. Great, thank you, Tracy. Um, 
It is slide number 11. So lesson two, slide 11. Great. Awesome, awesome. Yep, barium is one of them. Cobalt, yep. I mean, there's stuff that we have never heard of like silicon, lead, uh, titanium, calcium, iron, sulfur. And there's a bunch of weird ones like, I don't, I don't even know how to say it. Benzopyrene, ethyl, benzene, xylene, toluene. Yeah, and that can all be found in the e-cigarette aerosol that uh, is being inhaled into the lungs. Okay, awesome. I see a couple more people coming in. Yeah, so if you haven't been able to find it, it's lesson two, slide 11. Formaldehyde, uh-huh. Okay, uh, just to move on, uh, we'll move on to lesson three, uh, find the PhotoVoice Garbology Project. Uh, this is kind of a, an additional activity. We recommend giving it as homework because it's an assignment um, where students take images of how uh, e-cigarette or vaping usage affects their community. So whether that's uh, litter in the park, whether it's somebody you know smoking in the back, but it's like a, got a plume going on. Um, I've definitely dri been driving down like a highway and I saw smoke coming out of someone's car because they're vaping. Uh, that always scares me a little bit because I'm like, oh my gosh, is their car okay? But it's always usually vape smoking. Um, and the students go into their community, they take pictures of how it affects their community, and then they come back and discuss it. So that's um, a really great activity for them to do, but they have to do it for homework um, since it's kind of out in the community. Uh, and if they don't have access to a smartphone, camera phone, or like a, a physical camera, they can always cut up a magazine, draw a picture, um, or just imagine how, you know, they've learned about how um, e-cigarette usage has impacted their community. Okay, let me know when you're able to find it in lesson three. I will also look for it. I'm cheating a little bit though, since I know <laughs> where these are. Um, okay. Anybody able to find it yet? Got it? Okay, great. I see someone's got it. Awesome, awesome. So the um, Garbology Project video is in lesson three, and that slides. Um, there's a video on slide 18 where it introduces um, other students' examples uh, of their own Garbology you know, images or anything like that. And then the actual um, debrief is on 19 and the homework assignment is on 22. So if you found any of those slides, 18, 19, or 22, we're talking about photo voice. Awesome. 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 Okay. Now moving on a little bit, uh, lesson four, uh, go into lesson four and find your favorite decoding ads practice slides. So whether that's an activity that's asking for, um, like for the students to list all the adjectives that they see in the slide. Um, I believe there's a really good one. It's red and it's super bright and there's like a travel suitcase or something and like sunglasses. Uh, and it's asking the students to describe all of the um, adjectives that makes them, that comes to mind when they see this ad. Um, so it can be an example ad like that, or it can be um, a tactic. So if you really like the color slide, um, how, uh, tobacco companies use colors in advertisement to really um, grasp the attention of students or even flavors. Um, so look through lesson four and find your favorite um, decoding ad slide. And then you can put either the slide number or a description of the ad um, into the chat. I will also navigate there as well. Okay. Let me know when you find your favorite ad or just put a description of your favorite ad into the chat. Mm -hmm. The air bar, I-21. Yep, that's a, that's a good one too. Let's see. 
We went over some of them too, like the hello summer um, in the example slides, the one where the kid is drawing on their shoes or even the, um, the car one. There's colors, um, talking about shapes, uh, messaging. So I think there's one of them that is basically a Christmas ad and there's like a background of Christmas in it and they have like really fancy Christmas letters and um, tinsel and um, I don't know, all kinds of stuff in the ad. But that's obviously targeting anybody who likes Christmas, which includes kids. Kids love Christmas, getting presents. Um, but this is not a present that they want to get. Um, the Valentine's Day ad. Yep. Yep. Great example. Okay, I'll give it a, another minute or so for you to look through. I know there's a lot of examples. Um, yeah, the Halloween ad, limited flavors. Mm-hmm. 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 Okay, awesome. Awesome job, everyone. Uh, okay, just for time's sake, because I know we're, uh, we got about 15 minutes left. Hungry for flavor, yeah. That one's interesting. Join the party, playing off of the social pressures on teens to fit in, to, to be in the party. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. Just for time's sake, we'll move on to lesson five, uh, scavenger hunt, healthy options for coping with stress. Um, so I think there's a specific example slide in lesson five that gives students different options to cope with stress that don't include using nicotine or other drugs. So if you can find that slide, Navigate to lesson five. And um, I see someone, Daniel asks, would I be able to get the link for the slides? Um, yes, I believe uh, if you're talking about the um, presentation slides, I believe um, Tracy has them and may send them out. Uh, later on, but if you're talking about the scavenger hunt slides, they're all within the curriculum. Um, if you go over to our website, uh, let me see what I have in here. Aha. Yeah, if you go over to our website and you click on it, all of the slides are in here. We're just doing a scavenger hunt uh, for the different slides, uh, but they should all be linked within our website here. Yeah. Okay. So if you have navigated, um, to healthy options for coping with stress, uh, write in your favorite activity that you like to do personally. If you, uh, I see somebody says watch a movie and read. Uh, if you personally like to go for exercise, you can say anything, um, even something that's not on the slide. But as long as you find the slide, you can put it on. Yep, 26 and 27. Uh-huh. And they may vary depending on um, which version you're using. I believe the middle school version is a little shorter just because there's less like content, um, but they should be really similar. Walking, shopping therapy, me too. <laughs> me too, online, or I like, I like going to the mall too. Sleep, yep, I see a lot of sleep, listening to music, painting, yeah. So we all cope with stress in different way. Exercise is definitely a good one going for a run, playing a sport, uh, gardening. Mm -hmm. We have some great meditation videos in here too that talk about, um, I think it's called box breathing where there's a square and then you breathe in as like the dot goes across the top and then you breathe out and then breathe in. Um, so that's a good one uh, we to go over with your students. We also have a, I think it's called the 54321 method where you kind of sit, relax, and then like kind of taking your surroundings, list five things that you see, four things you feel, or, or something like that. Um, that's a good kind of breathing meditation activity as well. Yeah, like nature, gardening, reading, relaxing, and shopping. Yeah, I love it. Okay, great. So hopefully you were able to um, get a chance to dive into the website, look at the slides, you can kind of preview it. Um, I know a lot of you probably just clicked through on the website. Um, but if you are able to try downloading at least one of them onto Canva, if you already have your Canva account, make that copy. Um, and 
uh, let me know if you have any issues, if you're running into any issues. Okay, great. So thank you for your participation in the scavenger hunt. Uh, here is a quick survey. Um, it's just the post survey, so that pre one that you did um, practicing for the study that we're doing. Um, but I just put the post survey into the chat if you can click on that and fill it out. Um, or here's the QR code here if you want to scan that really quickly. Um, it's also in the chat. And um, that's the end of my presentation. So I just want to say thank you all for your participation. Uh, it's been amazing to connect with all of you. Uh, Bonnie's email is down here, as well as my email. If you have a question about anything at all regarding website, Canva, curriculum in general, um, Bonnie also does wonderful Vaping 101 um, talk, uh, talks. So if you want to know specifically about the brain science behind vaping, if you want to know like more uh, targeted study and statistic things, um, you can reach out to Bonnie and see when she's doing her next 101 talk. Um, she'd also be happy to present uh, to this group. I'm sure um, maybe in a future webinar or something, but uh, our, our emails are here. Um, thank you so much. Yeah. So as long as you take this survey, um, that's all that I'm required um, to do. I don't know, Tracy, if you have any closing thoughts, uh, anything that you need them to do um, before leaving or uh, any questions as well. As well. I'll, I'll be here for questions. Yes, perfect. Thank you so much, Carly. Great presentation. I definitely learned a lot myself. I hope you all got to learn quite a bit about uh, the you, me, vape free, uh, together vape free uh, curriculum as well. Um, we are gonna go until, uh, I'd say about like 11.30. You guys have any more questions or if there's questions that are unanswered, like please ping us again. There was a lot of participation, which we appreciate. We just moved up all the questions. So if there's anything that we might've missed, please send it to us again. And uh, Carly will be happy to answer any of uh, the questions regarding the curriculum. And if there's anything regarding CSHA that you'd like to ask, I am here as well. Um, I did want to put this on your radar, but we will have our third webinar on motivational interviewing. So if this is of interest uh, to you, I will put it in the chat right now. Um, that's the registration link. This will be on March 14th. It will be a Tuesday from 12 to 1 p.m. So again, if you're interested, feel free to join us. Um, if not, please share it with your peers as well. Um, we think it'd be a great webinar for you all as a continuation in this um, five-part smoking, vaping, and, and intervention method uh, to be series. Uh, and with that, I'm just going to go ahead and um, mention as well, as you are leaving this webinar, um, there will be an eval for CSHA um, that will pop up. It's only five quick multiple choice questions. Please fill it out, and that will help us inform for future webinars. Um, and I see a hand raise, so I'm just going to make space for this person. Um, uh, Latanya is saying um, they need to scan it again. Is it possible for you to go back to your QR code? Yeah, yes, I think that's yes. what they need to scan again. The QR code. Um, I can put the link in the chat one more time, but I will also share screen just in case um, the QR code is easier. Yep. Perfect. Hopefully Thank that you. comes up. Yeah. Thank you, thank you. Yep, gonna leave it up for um, a minute or so. So folks, please make sure you're taking this survey for Carly and her team as well. That would be much appreciated. And then after this, I'll share just one last screen from CSHA and that should be it on our end. But yes, if there's, if there's any other questions that you, know, you might have now that we went through the whole entire webinar, please feel free to put it in the group chat. And I also put um, Bonnie's and my email into the into the chat. Uh, it's a little bit a couple um, messages back, but they're in there if you want to copy them, um, copy them down, reach out to us at any time. Okay. Um, if anything, I can stop sharing and then um, you can share. Perfect. Thank you so much. Okay. Great. So I'm just gonna hit and share our very last slide. Basically what Carly had said, here is our email addresses. This is Carly, our presenters today. Um, if you're looking for Bonnie's or Holly's uh, email addresses, if you scroll up uh, in our chat, it should be there as well. But I can also include this information in your follow-up email after this webinar. This is my email address. If you have any questions for us specifically, here's some more um, links that you can uh, visit if you're interested. There's some chat in there. 
uh, hi, there's some questions in there. So I'm just going to go ahead and just stop right there. But um, Carly, did you want to go ahead and address them? Certainly, yes. Uh, so I see the first question is um, how soon can we begin using this program? Um, the You and Me Together Vape Free middle school and high school versions are live. I mean, we went through them on the website. You can start using them today if you'd like. Uh, just download the slides and you can teach it to your students um, at any time. Uh, if you're talking about the middle, uh, sorry, the elementary school version, that one has not been launched yet. We anticipate it launching within the next two weeks or so. Uh, so it, they will be on the website. You can check back in within the next two weeks, um, give or take a little bit. Um, we're just finishing up some last stuff and then, you know, making sure it's perfect before we launch. Um, so check back for that. But middle school and high school are on. If you're talking about the um, some other programs like the Healthy Futures Alternative to Suspension, that one's also available as well. Um, the Cannabis uh, Awareness Prevention Toolkit, that one should be launching within the next couple weeks as well. Um, there is a current version. It's a little um, outdated. It has like our old slides and um, some, you know, outdated um, percentages and things like that, but we are updating it and the updated one uh, should be fully launched within the next couple of weeks. So yeah, thank you for your question. Okay, I see Amy says, curious about any research or evaluation data of the toolkit you have in terms of impact on students. Um, yeah, so currently we don't have any like concrete data on our um, on our personal like curriculum. Uh, we have initial like feedback that it works and that uh, everything, um, I guess is, is going well with the curriculum, but that's why we're doing the study. We want that uh, concrete, you know, percentages. Here's what students thought beforehand. And then after taking the curriculum, here are their um, attitudes towards vaping and e-cigarette usage. And then we want to see like, you know, how many are open to trying e-cigarettes. It should be, you know, a bit higher in the pre you know, and lower in the post. Um, but we are conducting that study currently. So we don't have any, um, ready, ready to go data. We're hoping to have a data back very soon. Um, but if you want, please keep in touch and I can um, send you updates as the study concludes. Um, if you want some outside resources, like some other studies that prevention work, you know, in general works, uh, email me as well. And then I think Bonnie has some great resources she can send you. Uh, okay, question about the trial incentives. Um, yeah, yeah. Um, I think you can, if nobody else has any questions, I'd be happy to stay and talk about the incentives. Um, but yes, Scott is uh, a wonderful person on our team to contact. He is on the research team as well as Holly. Um, they're both kind of co-doing research coordination. So if you're already connected with Scott, um, I can put his email in the chat too. Um, right at Stanford. Um... Oh, sorry, I misspelled Stanford. Um, it's sgerbert at stanford.edu. Um, but anyway, if you're already in touch with him, please go ahead and like you can you know continue talking with him. He can get you a meeting to talk about exactly how they work, how the incentives work, how the incentives will be distributed to your students. Um, you have Scott's email. Oh yeah, <laughs> Scott joined us in December or early January, I believe. Oh, he was your boss. Scott, Scott's wonderful. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so yeah, feel free to email him. I mean, he's doing uh, the study with us now. He can set up a meeting with you. Um, he's been trying to do a lot of recruiting and he's great at, at recruiting schools because he has so many amazing connections like you, um, but still recruiting for the study. Um, he'd be a good person to reach out to as well as Holly. Yeah. Awesome. I think that is all the questions we have now. So thank you again, Carly, for this amazing presentation. This is absolutely amazing. And thank you everyone for joining us today. We hope you found this webinar helpful and we hope everyone takes care of themselves. Other than that, we'll be sending out a follow-up email soon. So I'll be on the lookout for that. Thank you everyone. Bye. Thank you, Tracy.